Hi, Peter Lloyd here. Welcome to the small shed. This week I'm going to make a start at long last on the dust extraction and that's coming up next. This week I'm going to make a start on the dust extract system. Now this video I'm going to apologise for in advance, it will be even more boring than usual uh, because I'm going into the thought processes behind um, how I came to get to where I am with the, the system I'm putting in. Um, so it's dealing a little bit with sort of design, layout and that sort of thing. So if you want to skip this one please feel free to do so and move on. I'll put another one out at the same time I think which will be the actual installation itself of the extract ducting uh, but this is more to explain the reasoning behind why I've gone down the particular route I've done. I've been working on this for about four months now since I started work in the shed and you can see in the corner there's a whole load of bits and pieces of duct and stuff all ready to go in. Um, now the reason I've gone for what I've gone for which is square or rectangular ducting is um, to do with sizes of pipes and all that sort of thing which I'll explain a little bit later. Uh, I started four months ago in the small shed cutting this slat wall um, for putting on the walls and mounting the tools and I realised pretty much that next day that because I couldn't see and couldn't breathe that I'd really got a problem that I'd never come across before. Prior to this I'd done work outside because I hadn't got room in, in the old shed I had uh, and in here the dust doesn't dissipate into the atmosphere. So the first thing I did was to buy uh, one of these dust monitors because there's no real way I'm going to be able to tell whether what I'm doing is any good or not or how well it's doing without knowing what the sort of background levels are um, on dust. So I, I've had that running for several months now. I've been monitoring background levels, what it's like when I walk in in the morning and what it's like when I'm routering and drilling and sawing and that sort of thing. So I've got some baseline information that will at least tell me how much I'm getting out of the atmosphere when I start the dust extract system uh, and how well it's doing. Um, so I'll start off with a brief run through of as I say, the layout of the shed, why I've put things where they are and we'll move on to the actual build in a separate video. So that was the shed as it started off. Um, I've got a door that opens that way. I deliberately opened the door outwards so that it wouldn't cause problems. I've put the MFT table um, towards the one end because there's a window there, there's a window there and a window there. And it was getting maximum light over what I thought would be the workbench that I'd be using most. The far end I've got the um, Triton TWX7 workstation which is a router saw and it can be used as a bench as well and that can be pulled out um, effectively into that position or further back out that way to use the saw section for it when I'm using the circular saw which is when I first did the slat wall and that's what caused all the problems. Um, there's a lot of other carts being built which will roll around which will have chop saws, band saw, uh, pillar drill, things like that on them and the intention is that they'll slide in and out of various spaces and, and the original intention was to put some sort of vacuum set up in that corner and run some ducting around um, and the ducting itself was another thought process I had to go through as to what I was going to use. It was a video very early on when I started this by uh, Stephen A. Watson. He's got Stephen's 8x6 workshop and I'll put a link to that down below. Um, he come up with um, using bathroom ducting. I, I have an aversion to using 
large round pipes. I don't think they're particularly elegant in the shed and they're going to take up quite a lot of room. By the time you get a four inch pipe, mount it on a bracket which will pull it out from the wall. It's going to be five or six inches of, of wasted space around the edge. And, and I just thought of it as being a slightly inelegant solution. Um, in theory, the circle of a pipe is a much more efficient shape to move air than anything else because there's the minimum surface area for to get skin friction when the wind goes through it. Um, but I just didn't want to have that. And Stephen had come up with using bathroom duct, 4 by 2 ish which is square, clips nicely against the wall. Very, very smart. And, and at some point, I can't quite remember when, I emailed him and said, I'm going to pinch that idea. And he said, yeah, fine, more than welcome to do that. But be aware of the fact that the area of air moved through that pipe is nothing like the same as a four inch pipe, let alone a six inch pipe. Now, a six inch pipe would be totally out of the question, but the area of a six inch pipe is um, 17,673 square millimetres, I think. Um, so that's a metre long of that. You can get an idea of the sort of volume that you can shift with it. A four inch pipe is seven five, uh, seven, sorry, seven eight five five. Um, and that's what a lot of the shops are using to, to shift chips and things like that. A lot of people are using that. And he pointed out that the problem with the uh, 110 by 54 duct, 4 by 2 or thereabouts, is that it's about 5,940. So it's, it's worse than the 4 inch pipe. It's probably about the same as the 3 inch pipe or better than that. I'm not sure. And that was where I was going. And then I stumbled when I started to look for buying this stuff. I came across um, its big brother which is 204 by 60 pipe. Now that seemed to be an ideal compromise because it, the area on that was 12,240. So that actually fell in terms of the volume of air it could shift somewhere between a four inch and a six inch pipe without a, a huge amount of difference. It, it sticks out probably another 10 millimeters than that one. So I started looking around for that and I found some cheap supplies of it which I can mention when I'm doing the actual ducting part itself but that ended up as being my favourite solution and the idea was to put that round just about skirting level and bring up some offshoots behind the workstations and where you could plug in tools. Again, over a period of time, which is why it sometimes helps to let these things develop rather than just blindly go in, um, I decided that that was a singularly even more inefficient way of doing it because to get the extract from the MFT, you're going halfway around the shed and round probably a couple of corners. And I've got another dead space at the time, which is that corner. It seemed logical, therefore, to put that in there, have a line of ducting running along there, a line of ducting running around there. I was going to put a small return on it there just to either have something to put in a plug-in-the-shop vac type handle for sweeping the floor and things, or just connecting tools to um, be an outlet there and an outlet behind the MFT and probably one on that wall there. So there'd be three outlets there and one up there. That would give me the best I was going to get, I think. OK, that might be bigger area of volume of air, it'll shift, but as I say, the skin friction, the area of wall that the air is having to move through is bigger than the nose. And you've got very sharp bends if I'm working on the corners, whereas a normal pipe system, you'd have a much more gentle curve, which again, all these things cause reduction in efficiency but that's where I've ended up with so I've got a, uh, a unit going in that corner 
which will be the extract system. Uh, that will be able to roll in and out on a cart, but it does allow me to put some more rolling carts there and there, and I can get another rolling cart there. All of these things will roll around, but at least I've got still got my work area that I can move in. So that's the solution that I've come up with. It might not be the best solution, but as I said at the beginning, this is going to have to be a compromise one way or another. Well, sorry if that was a bit heavy going, but I did think it was important to establish the uh, the sort of parameters that I was working within, and it may be of use to some of you who are contemplating putting some extraction in your own workshop. You can at least see what my thought processes were and whether you agree or disagree. Uh, if you like the video, please press like and subscribe. Uh, I look forward to seeing you next week when we'll actually get on and do some real work by putting the ducting in. Bye.